everybody. Friendly Neighborhood, Glenn here. And I want to talk to you today about technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk a lot about technology, but technology has become such a part of our lives. But at the same point, it's super complicated. And for all of you guys out there running hotels, boy, oh boy, do you got your work cut out for us. Today, we got Mr. Jonas Tannenbaum, founder of Access Consulting. Uh, Jonas, you've been around for a while. We've got a couple of other guests coming here. But am I right? Is technology becoming super complicated? That the average hotel, you just can't necessarily figure it out. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Glenn. Technology is changing so rapidly and in so many different areas. And hotel hotels are really like a laboratory of all different kinds of technology. Internet, right. PMS, POS. It's almost like a proving ground. And it almost feels like you're in quicksand sometimes. It is changing so quickly. <laughs> right. Not only that, Jonas, it's like, hey, I'm going to get this great technology. Oops, it's out of date all of a sudden. Right? So there could be a fear of picking technologies. But listen... Uh, I know you know everything, but we got two great people joining us with us. That's Chase Robeson and Mr. Sharif Zarain with M7 Services. Chase is uh, president over there, and Sharif is the chief information officer. Gentlemen, great to see you. Chase, let me go uh, straight to you. We're talking about this issue in regards to technology. Um, why has it become so complicated for the average hotelier to figure out what's right, what's wrong, and what they should be doing at their properties? Yeah, yeah, I think for the I th thank you, Glenn. Uh, think for the hotel industry in particular. I think the speed of change is a is a significant factor in the complexity of of hotel technology. It's just changing so fast. Whether it's a cybersecurity issue, movement to the cloud, and just the, the diversity of systems that a hotel has to manage uh, all at, all at one property, and then if you think about multiple multiplying that across the number of properties that a lot of these chains and, and, and ownership groups have, it just becomes a very complicated thing very quickly. Yeah, and Sharif, I'll throw it to you. Uh, one of the things that I'm seeing out there is with so many disparate systems as a CIO, I mean, you got to be worrying about how to get all of these things connect with each other. It seems like we've been talking about this my entire career, 25 plus years now. I used to not have this gray hair. <laughs> or, or no hair at all, right? <laughs> yeah, really good point. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I, I think I think each one of you gentlemen have brought up you know a very valid point you know in in terms of technology as it relates to hospitality today, right? Um, and, and I think the last thing that Chase had mentioned is the ever changing technologies. And the biggest challenge that we're seeing right now is the lack of focus, right? So we have hospitality, which should be uh, guest focused, should be guest driven. And then we're expecting, uh, you know, operators at the hotels to shift focus into what's out there, what's technology, um, and and what what are the new trends and what are the new technologies. Um, I, I think what's needed in the industry today, what's uh, is, is to centralize that um, those resources, is to to have you know resources available to those operators uh, um, to explain the uh, you know the technologies, the trend, what's out there, what's new and what needs to be done to deliver those technologies to those hotels. So Jonas, what is it that we have to be considering right now? Because it's kind of like that paradox of choice. There's so much out there. Certain hoteliers just might be overly confused. And I think if it was me, I'd be going, ah, forget about it. I'm just not gonna deal with it right now. Well, two quick points I wanna make. Not only is the technology changing, but, but guest and consumer <laughs> trends are also changing quite quickly. And this puts an additional layer of pressure on uh, what the hotel needs from a technology standpoint to be able to deliver to their to their guests as well as to their employees. So having a go-to technology resource uh, like a managed service provider like M7 really lifts that burden off the GM, off off the uh, the hotel back office, so that so that they can get back to the business of providing uh, great experiences to their guests without having to manage uh, technology changes on the fly. And if, and if something were to break or they need some assistance with that, it's good to have just a, a, a go-to technology resource to be able to address those needs. I think that's a really good point, Jonas, because uh, we're, at a, we're at a crossroads right now. There's a lot of technology out there we just don't know, we don't understand, and to try to fool ourselves into believing that we could have it all figured out when you're a generalist and not an expert in something then I think that's when you're going to go uh, astray. Chase, let me ask you, what are some of the big mistakes that people are making that you're able to, to, to figure out when you come in with your services and evaluate what's going on? Well, I, I think one of the biggest challenges, if you're, if you're a general manager of a property or a property owner, your biggest, your biggest focus is on your clients. And I think the challenge is, and if you got multiple properties thinking that you have 
one guy cover the, the myriad of systems, whether it's the backend servers, the network, the kind of staff facing systems, and then again, the, the complexity in the client facing uh, um, experience systems, having one person Thinking that one person can handle and cover all of those technologies is, is a challenge. Now, if I'm a GM also and I'm facing staffing shortages or just having trouble getting people in the, into the property to, to, to work with my Are guests. Are you saying that the hotel industry might have staffing shortages, Chase? <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> we yes, all know we, this is a huge problem right that's now. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Dealing with the 100%, 120% of the volume mm -hmm. with two-thirds of the staff is right. a critical challenge that these guys are facing. So if I'm able to outsource and, and, and have somebody do that remotely or somebody that can, that has the experience to handle those systems, I'm doing, I'm focusing my resources with my, my guests. Uh, so Sharif, how do you bring this all together and speak a common language? Hotelier speak, hotelier speak, and a CIO I've noticed sometimes speaks in a way that uh, the average Joe at the property level doesn't understand. Yeah, so uh, again, I think I separate myself from it. I was groomed in hospitality. I, I worked all my life in hospitality. So I, I think from my perspective, I do speak that same language with operators, but I get you cool. right? Exactly, it is complicated. You, mm -hmm. you need to get to a, you know, a common ground when you speak English back to these guys. You know, yep. Chase and you brought up a good point about security, which at the end of the day, from an operator standpoint, it's a lot on their mind, where we are at us as an MSP and as, as partners, we need to bring that to light. We need to explain, right. listen, uh, put that into numbers, put that into perspective and, and explain this is how it's going to affect your hotel. I understand you don't want to spend that, you know, capital investment uh, initially because there was no visible return. But to your point, we need to translate that into English and put that into numbers and come back and say, this is what you're facing. This is what, uh, you know, your, your challenge today. Sharif, I mean, that's a really good point because when it comes to technology, it's functional, but invisible. It's much easier to understand that I need these soft goods or hard goods for my room, but the technology point is a little bit on the outside. So Jonas, what are some of the few technologies that me as an owner or an operator of a property should be thinking about right now? Is it more traditional stuff? Is it emerging technologies? How do you see all of it coming together? Yeah, great question, I'm glad you asked. There's really two, uh, I bucket that into two. There's all of the stuff you have to have to run a hotel today. Uh, property management system, point of sale, high-speed internet, security, credit card processing. I mean, you have to have those things to operate a hotel. But then there's also so many emerging technologies, AI, VR, metaverse, voice, uh, and and having having a trusted technology partner partner to help either decide which of these to deploy and then how, how to deploy them successfully and smoothly is great to have that technology partner to run the today's business and also emerge into new technologies at the same time. I'll also say, tell you which technologies you don't need to get involved right. in, right, Chase? Because as much as some of this virtual reality stuff might make a lot of sense, it might only make sense in small little ways today, right? Like I think it might be a great tool for showing someone who can't get to your property a layout of needing space and all of that how it works, but it may not make sense for certain types of properties. What are some of the technologies that you're seeing, Chase, in your opinion, that are the must-haves or the eh, maybe not so much today? Yeah, I mean, I think in general, uh, you, you don't want to be on the bleeding edge of all of the new opportunities and new technologies that are out there. I think that I, you know, our recommendations would be, and the way we advise our clients, is to focus on the infrastructure that will provide you with the flexibility to implement the things that have been tried and, and tested in the marketplace that make sense for your clients. I think things that really either enhance the client experience or that drive results to the bottom line for your your staff and employees is what we're really focused on for our for our clients. I like what you're saying there. So it's really taking laser focus and evaluating each of these technologies. And even though you might not be able to determine that X amount of dollars is is, you know, made because of it, a lot of technology out there when it comes to operations, if you don't have it, it's more about what you're not getting as opposed to what you're having. Sharif, does that make sense or am I uh, full of bunk over here? It, it, it makes total sense. Listen, um, I, I think, you know, we're talking about the foundation that we're talking about. Um, let's help those clients and those hoteliers build our foundation and then come back, right? After everybody else have tried those bleeding technologies, right? And, and then come back and, 
and present those new technologies. Listen, I might be true out today, and I think you or, or Jonas have brought up metaverse, right? I don't think metaverse has a place in our industry today. Now we're we're going backwards. We're asking. That seems to be you know, diametrically opposed to the goals of a hotel, right? If I don't, exactly if I put this thing on, I don't need to go to a hotel. <laughs> Thank you, and that's exactly it, right? So. And it might be to your point again, you know, maybe mm-hmm. something that we look at for other areas in two, right. three, five, ten years from today, but definitely does not have a place today. So going back to uh, to, to, to the foundation, right, we, we need to build that foundation. Um, you know, the guest needs and the guest uh, bandwidth changes on a daily basis. Right. So we're not building, building a very solid foundation and infrastructure. We're not going to be able to deliver any of these technologies. Uh, and yeah, and you got to worry about that bandwidth because I'm going to bring 14 devices exactly and stream 4K video on yep. all of them simultaneously. Exactly. Right? And your watch and your car and everybody has <laughs> everything has an IP address now. Uh, right. So we need to build on top of that. Right. And I'm, I'm only kind of sort of joking, Jonas, but the fact is, if I'm going away with my family, I have my laptop, I have my phone, I have my yep. iPad, and so does each member of my family, right? Yep, that's right. We, we know that. And, uh, you know, some of the old um, algorithms that used to be used to determine uh, bandwidth needs and, um, and throughput, throughput needs uh, have, have had to be really reconsidered because, as I said earlier, guest patterns are changing. You've got the leisure guest. You've got more, uh, more usage. You've got um, uh, higher bandwidth, more over-the-top access to content on guest devices, as you said. Glenn. So really, um, when we talk about technology changing, it's both technology changing. And as I said earlier, it's also guest uh, behavior and, and, uh, and guest uh, usage also changing. And both of these right. put a stress on the technology needs at, at all properties, regardless of what chain you're talking about. Mm-hmm. It's taking place throughout the entire industry. Right. Um, Chase, before we wrap up, uh, tell us a little uh, bit more about M7 services and what you're doing over there. Yeah, so we so our job is to is to make the GM help facilitate the GM in delivering excellent client experience. You know, we the, the stuff just needs to work. Um, nobody has time with the staffing shortages today to troubleshoot to try new technologies. And but but the, the reason why technology is there is to be an enabler enabler for their employees to deliver excellent service to their clients. And our job is to make sure that it works, and then when it doesn't, that it's get that it gets fixed immediately. Yep, makes up uh, makes a lot of sense. So, gentlemen, uh, thank you for being here. If you want to learn more about M Seven Services, it's the letter M, the number seven services dot com. Thanks, guys. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next time. And uh, listen, the world of technology is completely changing. What you think is good solution for today may not necessarily make sense tomorrow. And it's impossible for each and every one of us to understand all the nuances and changes that are going out there. I'm a content producer. You guys are operators, owners, developers. You don't have time to get into the to the weeds with all of this stuff. That's why great companies like M7 Services and Access Consulting are out there to help you figure it out. So for Chase, Sharif, and Jonas, I'm Glenn Hausman. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time on No Vacancy News. Thank you.